Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. In this lesson, we are going to have an interval rundown. I'm going to show you how you can remember all these intervals and apply them melodically and harmonically to the best of our abilities. And most of what I tell you today will be on the theoretical side because I've done a lot of lessons on the ear training side, on how you can hear these sounds easily. So... To complement this lesson, it's also good to check out the ear training lessons on intervals which are linked in the description and found on our YouTube channel as well. We've put playlists and for better organization, you can go to nathanielschool.com. You can go to free tutorials. So when you click on that, there's also a category called intervals. So you can learn about these subjects by just clicking on them. So what you need in this lesson is basically a paper, notebook, pen, your piano, keyboard and that's pretty much it. Let's get cracking. Before we do, hit that subscribe if possible, give our video a like, share and you could also turn on that bell icon for regular notifications. So if you take any root, so an interval will always have a root or a reference point. So let's say if it's C, the first interval or intervals which you would need to remember are the fifths and the fourths. Now to remember them, you have the circle of fifths. Just go fully down clockwise and you get your perfect fifths. C to the G, G to the D, D to the A, A to the E, E to the B, B to the F sharp, watch out there. F sharp to the C sharp or D flat, D flat to A flat, A flat to E flat, E flat to B flat, B flat to F, back to C. A trick for piano perspective would be if you take B flat to F, it's black note to white note. If you take B to F sharp, it's white note to black note. The rest of the fifths are all going to be white to white or black to black. Okay, so there's fifths and now we look at fourths. So with respect to fourths, C, F, F, B flat, B flat, E flat, E flat, A flat, like that. So you're essentially going down the circle, counterclockwise if you will. So clockwise circle, you get perfect fifths, counterclockwise circle, you get perfect fourths. So these are the most in important intervals in music. You're going to build almost all your chords and scales, melodies, using the fifths and the fourths. You have to learn them even for progressions and a lot of activities in this field. Coming to thirds, thirds is the next foremost very, very important thing to learn. You have two kinds of thirds. The major third, the minor third. Now, there are many ways of kind of learning them or feeling them naturally. One is, if you know the major scale and the minor scale, this is the third degree of those scales. So, in the major scale, the third is the major third. In the minor scale, the third degree is the minor third. Now, that's, that's one way of doing it. But there are a couple of other tricks which you could also consider. One is a third or a major third will be two tones apart or four steps from in, from the root. So one, two, three, four. So four steps from C. One, two, three, four. Four steps from anywhere is a major third. Okay? While three steps from anywhere is a minor third. So fifths, you need the circle of fifths. Fourths, you need the circle of fifths. Thirds also, you could look at from the circle of fifths by going, you know, from the root, you, you count clockwise or counterclockwise, but then you'll be skipping a lot. So thirds are just something you need to just feel. You need to get it somehow because they are, again, very, very important intervals. Another way to get the thirds is through the triad. So if you take a major chord... The in-between note is the major third. Take a minor chord. The in-between note is our minor third. So major, minor. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah. So remember your thirds, major and minor. 
So five, four, and the threes, you have to really get it down into your system. Circle of fifths, memory, practice, scales, whatever tool. Regarding the other intervals, which are which which are also important, let me try and help you out from there. The way I like to look at them is let's find all the other intervals with respect to what we learned just now, which is the fifths, the fourths, the thirds. Okay. So if you're trying to build, let's start with the seventh. The seventh is a very important interval for chords, especially the bigger chords like the extensions, the seventh chords and so on. So if you if you want to build a seventh from let's say C, a good way to visualize it is first of all there are two sevenths. There's the major seventh and there's the minor seventh. Now to get yourself a major seventh, you just go octave minus one. Okay, octave C minus one, which is B. Minor seventh, also called as dominant seventh, will be octave minus two. Okay, so major seventh, minor seventh. Now, where does this style of learning it help? If you're, let's say, playing a C major chord, you're playing it this way and you want to build a major seventh from there. So just ask yourself, okay, major seventh is a major chord plus a major seventh interval, which is that. That's it. Now, the advantage of this fo format will be, okay, let's take a dominant seventh. A dominant seventh chord is nothing but major plus a flat seven. Now, if you were on an inversion like E, G, C, and you still wanted to make this chord into a seventh chord, just knowing that I'm on C major and now I want to make it a dominant seventh chord. So to make it a dominant seventh, what do we do? We add a B flat. So wherever the B flat is closest, whichever finger is free or available, you just play that. There we go. Now if you're here, which is the second inversion of C major triad, ask yourself, how do I make it a dominant 7? C, 7th will be C major plus B flat. Where is the B flat closest? Here we go. Similarly, if I'm in my root position, my B flat could be below the C. I need a free finger, of course. Or it could be above the triad, which is there. Right? So when you visualize intervals this way by saying, okay, what is a dominant seventh? What is a minus seventh? It's octave or root minus two. What is a major seventh? It's root minus one. Slowly but surely, you get it more and more into your system rather than trying to mug this stuff up, which takes a long, long time. This way, you get to form it some way and then use it immediately. So try to use it to form these chords. If you're trying to form a major seventh interval, try to do it within a major seventh chord. Major with the major seventh or take a minor chord and then play a major seventh You've got yourself a minor major 7th. Or you could take a major chord, get a dominant 7th. Take a minor chord, minor 7th. So just like that, I've got, I've got you major 7th, minor major 7th, dominant 7th, minor 7th. And you can go forward. You can go to a lot more sounds along that line. Right? So that's about the sevenths, major and minor sevenths. Major is octave minus one, minor is octave minus two, or root minus one, root minus two. Seventh is over, guys. So now let's look at the sixth. The sixth can be visualized with respect to the fifth. Now, if you if you call this note out, this is A, right? A is called as the major sixth for the most part. How do I remember a major sixth? It's the fifth plus two. 
it's your major six, which is the fifth plus two. Okay, and this major six even works with a minor chord. We call it a minor sixth. So a minor sixth chord is nothing but a minor chord plus a major sixth. Okay, we don't call it minor major sixth. It's just minor six. So minor major sixth, major major sixth. Okay. Now you could also do a minor sixth embellishment. You could do. How do I get a minor sixth interval from C? It is fifth plus one. Now you could call a minor sixth also as an augmented fifth. Augmented means raising or sharpening, going higher by one. Minor sixth means going lower by one. So the major sixth, A going down by one. Becomes minor. The perfect fifth going up by one becomes an augmented fifth. So, whatever you call it, a minor sixth and an augmented fifth are the same tone, but we call them differently depending on the context. Like for the most part, an augmented fifth will replace the normal fifth. That's why we are removing the fifth, the perfect fifth, calling it augmented. While a minor sixth is telling us that there is no major sixth in the sound. Okay, so that's how you remember your sixth. Major sixth, perfect five plus two. Minor sixth, perfect five plus one. Okay, and one more thing to note: a major sixth is also called a diminished seventh. Now, a diminished interval can get slightly tricky because we have to double flatten a major or flatten a minor. So, if you understand it that way, this is a major seventh. I flatten that once to get a minor seventh. Flatten that again to get a diminished seventh. But a diminished seventh is better felt when you support it with a diminished triad. Now that's actually functioning as a diminished seventh, even though it's also a major sixth. So, just in conclusion, a major sixth is also a diminished seventh. A minor sixth is also a augmented fifth. Moving on. Now you have the fifth here, and you have the fourth here. Very easy to form the tritone, which is another interval. It's the four plus one. Or the five minus one, four plus one, five minus one. So four plus one, we call it an augmented fourth. C to F sharp. Five minus one, we always say diminished fifth. Okay. If you're confused, you can just say tritone, which is what that is. That's how you remember the tritone. Uh, if you call it an augmented fourth, there'll not be a perfect four. If you call it a diminished fifth, then there won't be a fifth. Example: the Locrian scale. While the Lydian has the sharp four, but not the normal four. That's why we say sharp four. Sharp four replaces the perfect four. Flat five generally replaces the normal five. Or you could have a scale like like the whole tone scale, which doesn't have the four or the five. So we say two, three, sharp four, sharp five, flat seven, octave. Quite like that scale. Okay, so. We've covered the tritone. We've covered the sixth, the seventh. What's remaining? The only thing remaining now is the second. You have two kinds of seconds: major second, which is root plus two, which is also the third major third minus two. If you look at it that way, or the very next step from anywhere is called a minor two. And just to move forward a, a little more, and, and to give you a little bit more out of this, 
you can also call some of these intervals by their extensions. You need to remember the numbers 9, 11 and 13. 9 is the same as 2 but played on the higher octave and observed with the 7th. Either the major or the minor 7th. So, 9s are there, 11s are the same as the 4 and 13 is essentially the same as the 6. But when you play the 9... Uh, 11 and 13 you generally are dealing with the 7 as well okay that's how we name the chord so if you take let's say a C dominant 7th keep it in your left hand like this and now play the the D which is the 9 you may call this a major 2nd but functionally it's working as a ninth. because there's that flat 7 there you could also flatten the 9, which is D flat. You could even raise the 9 to a D sharp, which is what that dominant 7th interval does to everything. It just makes everything usable. Like if I removed that and played a C major with that um, sharp 9, as we are calling it, just sounds really wrong but when I add the dominant 7th there is a context so that flat 7 means a lot when you're extending the harmony uh, similarly if you take a flat 9 sounds beautiful but when I take away all the other notes it sounds quite annoying but there we go So the extended intervals, the 9, the flat 9, the sharp 9, then the 11 is also there. Sharp 11 will all have a, a purpose or a context only when you have some other notes with it. Okay, So these are what we call intervals beyond the octave or extended intervals. Right guys, so let's recap. In the initial part of the lesson, I talked about the importance of remembering your fifths and fourths. How do we do that? In the circle of fifths, clockwise is fifth, counterclockwise is fourth. Then somehow mug up the thirds. You use them all the time, right? So just mug them up, get really well acquainted with the thirds. Then everything else got built around that framework. The seventh is octave minus one. Major seventh is octave minus one. Minor 7th is octave minus 2. Major 6th is 5th plus 2. Minor 6th is 5th plus 1 or 6th minus 1. Tritone is 5 minus 1 or 4 plus 1. 2 is just 2 after the 1. Minor 2 is just one step after the 1. That's how you remember your intervals. More food for thought. I've just put a circle of fifths diagram for intervals where I've actually used the circle of fifths to just show you geometrically every single interval which there ever is. And that also offers a different perspective. Do check out the picture. We'll be putting it out on Patreon. And all of the notes from this theory lesson will be on Patreon. So you can check it out. You can go through all my notes See if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box. And um, yeah, also suggest something which you'd like to learn next. Any doubts which you are facing, I'll be happy to go over your comments. So don't forget to leave those. Uh, give the video a like, that'll be awesome. Give the video a share. Share it with some of your musician friends and family if you, if you think they would be benefited from the lesson. We have a website as well, nathanielschool.com, where all of our lessons are grouped in structured courses. You could also fill up a form and do our regular um, music method flagship course, which is a, uh, a six-month structured certificate course. You could consider doing that as well, where you'll be learning theory, ear training, and of course, technique, not just for piano, also vocals, guitars, bass, and so on. Thanks a ton for watching the lesson, guys. Cheers. Catch you in the next one.